Hi everyone, this is Perik from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how to quickly create game assets for Noara the Conspiracy. Whenever I work on this kind of simple asset, I prefer to work with modeling and then sculpting instead of uh, doing a full sculpt. So in this modeling stage, I already try to give some uh, style to my asset. So I will make the top part slightly larger than the base and I will also bend the sides toward the inside so that uh, it will look better from a top view. So I'm using very basic tools like the extrude, the fill faces and I'm using a mirror modifier so that I just have to work on half of the chest. I will also make great use of the inset faces to model rapidly and extract the metallic frame around the chest. For the time being, I'm just modeling the base wooden part. And here you can see that I am using the inset faces and I will give it some thickness to get the metallic frame very rapidly. For those of you who are wondering on the right why the picture is uh, blurred, it's because it's one of the concepts for the game that are under NDA for the time being. This is not the chest concept. So I can share the chest, but I can't share any visual uh, regarding the asset for the time being. But I should be able to show you more assets very, very soon. So I will be repeating the same process of using the inset faces to create the frame. Now I'm just cutting some loops and trying to align them using the even option in the loop cut menu. This option allows you to align the newly created loop cut with the desired side. This will allow me to get those larger corners that you will see on the model later on. Once I've isolated those parts, I will duplicate them and press Ctrl F and use the solidify option to give them some thickness. I will repeat the process for the top part, creating the frame, giving it some thickness and separating it, then I will extract the corners, make them slightly bigger and I will be done. I will then add a subdivision modifier to increase the smoothness of the model and its geometry and I will use a bevel modifier to make sure that I have some hard edges. I'm trying to keep a decent topology mainly because of the use of the subdivision modifier that may get buggy if my topology is not good. I add a few bugs on the inside because I add some additional faces that had to be removed and some little bugs on uh, the inward faces because of the mirror modifier I had to fix. I won't be using this topology for the game asset on sculpted the game asset will be retopologized. To rapidly create wooden plank for the wooden part of the chest, I'm using the bevel modifier. I can get rid of the beveled edges and this will create me different wooden planks. I had few unexpected results due to inverted normals. You can now easily display them by going into the display option and selecting face orientation and the red one are pointing inward. So I can recalculate those by pressing Shift N and rework my solidify by pressing Ctrl F. Now you can see that I get the result I want. I prefer to separate the planks this way by creating different uh, volumes because it will be easier than in ZBrush to automatically 
create poly groups and isolate those planks and work them one by one instead of using one big volume and cutting into it using any sort of them standard or slice brush then using the topology move tool you will be able to deform them one by one so once I'm done with this, I'm adding a subdivision modifier and I'm adding by hand some loop cuts to harden the different edges because sometimes the bevel modifier doesn't work perfectly because it works on the wall model and I had some issues with the topology. So once I'm done with this cleaning stage, I will export this mesh as an OBG and I will import it into ZBrush. The first thing I do once important inside of ZBrush is go to Polygroup and click Group Automatic. This will automatically create a polygroup based on the connecting based this will automatically create a polygroup based on the connected meshes inside the object. This will allow me to easily isolate the planks or the metallic frames. I'm mainly using orb brushes whenever I work on stylized objects. And here you can see that I have some weird behavior and this is because I have some geometry under the metallic frame and the brush is trying to sculpt on both parts at the same time. So I will have to isolate them, work on them separately. Since I've generated those polygroup, I will simply have to control shift click them like this. And now you can see that the brush behaves as I want. So you may not feel it, but it's more subtle and I don't have those crazy uh, shape modification. So I can now start detailing the chest. I will add the hole for the key and then I will hammer the surface using this uh, planar brush and I will add some uh, scratches on the edges. So this is the kind of thing you could do uh, using uh, the trim dynamic brush. I prefer the one from Hall because it gives sharper edges. And if you are using a blender, you could use dynamic topology with the scrap brush, I believe it's called like this. And you should have somehow the same result. Since this is going to be a metallic part, I'm trying to find a matte cap that fits uh, the reflectivity or the filling of a metallic surface. Because if you go too crazy on having hard edges and very pronounced detailed, uh, it may look weird on the model and very noisy because it will be seen from afar as it will be a small asset. So I want to keep those details pretty subtle and get uh, pretty rounded edges. So I've sped up the video a bit on this one. So it's very, uh, it's a very fun part to be done because you don't really have to think about the proportion or think about anatomy. Doing this kind of asset is very simple and time to time I really enjoy doing them. I wouldn't enjoy doing this uh, my whole lifetime, but sometimes uh, you don't have to think that much. It's pretty easy to be done. For the planks, I will be using a very basic method, using a slice brush and drawing the wooden veins. And in the end, I will use the insert mesh brush to add any sphere that I will sculpt as if it were hammered nails. Since I had a lot of different assets to be done, I've then created different nails asset and I've created a custom in MM brush or insert mesh brush so that I can put those nails uh, to add more details onto the different metallic parts of the other assets.
once I was done with the sculpting, I decimated the mesh inside of the brush and exported it as an OBG. Then I re-imported it in Blender and started the retopology. So I'm using the snap tool, the shrink wrap modifier and a displacement modifier to keep my mesh upon the surface. This will help in the readability whenever I'm doing the retopology. So this retopology is ultra basic. I won't be uh, going into detail on how I made it. You just have to watch at the video. The only thing I've been trying to do is one, keep a super low poly count and two, keep the mesh in only one piece of connected faces. I haven't separated uh, the wooden planks and the metallic part. The goal is to make the baking and the painting way easier, especially the baking, because this will avoid me having crossing faces. Once done, I've applied all the modifier and start unwrapping the model. So I've put seams on each side faces and I've separated the lower part. Then to display the grid, I've created a shader and load the UV image. Then I will straighten as much uh, UV island as possible, especially the center part. So I will sure get some distortion on the UVs, but it doesn't matter because uh, the thing is that you have to find a balance between distortion and uh, the texel density and the ease of use of those UVs. On squared like this, this will be very easy for me to organize my UVs. And since we are now mainly painting directly onto the model, you don't need to have those perfect UVs as before without any distortion because uh, you won't be painting inside of a 2D software that much. In our case, the distortion is very minimal, so I can also use generated textures uh, seamlessly. This might be the main issues whenever you get a lot of distortion, is if you are using generated texture, then uh, the distortion will appear, or if you have an uneven texel density on your model, uh, you may have some uh, stretched area. So I can now bake uh, the normal map. So I'm not using a cage here. I'm uh, just uh, using the ray distance, uh, which allow you to somehow inflate the base mesh before it is uh, baked onto the eye poly mesh. And to figure out the distance and get rid of those green area, I'm just using the normal display and then uh, I uh, use its length in the ray distance. Those blue lines are the normal distance, which is 0.012, and I've just increased it to get rid of those green area to inflate more the cage, and now I'm just re-inputting the same distance into the display so that I can check if it will work with the other assets. Because here, I'm baking multiple assets on the same UV. This is why the UV of the chest appears so small onto the UV grid. Since it's not super obvious here, I encourage you to follow my PBR Shield tutorial, which is available for free on my Gumroad page and on this YouTube channel where I go more in depth into baking and the baking technique. Once I'm happy with the baking, I will test the normal map in cycles by using a simple shader and connecting the normal map into it. This stage was mainly to test the baking and the resolution of my mesh. Then I've taken all the different UVs of the different objects and I've set them onto a single UV map. This is often referred as a texture atlas or a UV atlas.
Using the same technique, I've baked the normal map, the normal map using the object coordinates and the ambient occlusion. Then I generated a curvature smooth and a curvature map using Daniel Bekushka Blender file. So you can then load all those files but the normal map that we won't be using into Photoshop. And the idea here is to create a base color that will be used inside of Substance Painter. I generally use it directly inside of Photoshop, but since I had multiple assets to be done, I wanted to create a smart material that I can use on multiple objects and multiple scenes. So what I generally do is that I set the first layer and fill it with a mid gray. So I go into the luminosity, set it to 50, and press Alt Delete to fill the layer. Then I set the ambient occlusion to multiply like this. Then I set the curvature smooth to soft light and set it to 70 or 80%. I do the same with the standard curvature, soft light but I decrease the opacity to 50% and finally I will use the blue channel from the object normal map here which give a natural top-down lightning and I will copy it and paste it into a new layer that I will set to multiply with an opacity of 50%. I can then save this as a base color, which I already have here, and I will load this texture inside of Substance Painter along with the normal map and all the other baked textures. I can't show the whole process because uh, there are a lot of pieces that I can't show here. So I will just break down what I did inside of Substance Painter here. So it's a bit pixelated because the asset is very small. What I did is that we'll take the wood as an example. So I will get rid of those and I will unfold it. Every material here, every folders work the same way. I will just hide those two so that you have only the wooden material here. So here I'm in material mode and we'll first check the color. So I press C to go to the diffuse. We have a curvature layer, which is an overlaid curvature to get more contrast. So I didn't want to have it on every kind of material. So I've added it only in the wood here, for example. The specular noise is a random noise that you can see here on the specular to give some variation to the reflection. So it's not super easy to be read on the wooden parts for sure. Then we have this uh, variation of the light. So it's the only part that is unpainted here. You can see I've added some highlights and then we have those base lights that I haven't been using on the chest so it's whenever you have a slice of the plank here that uh, could be uh, lighter or the inside of the wooden part that could be lighter I've used this and for the base so this is the interesting part we have our base diffuse here so if I hide this gradient you can see the texture we have generated inside of Photoshop this grayscale uh, texture. And then I just apply this gradient filter set to the diffuse and set the different color as we will do inside of Photoshop or inside of Blender using a color ramp. So you can change the position. It's like playing with the contrast or change the colors here. And since we've been using curvatures and directionality, it gives our chest some, oh, some kind of 
uh, directional lightning and a lot of details are popping out so i will just show you a metallic material i will add the wood and enable the copper so this is the copper used for the other asset i can't show you here so i'm using a specular workflow here not a metallic roughness workflow but it's exactly the same if i go into the base i have a gradient for the color i have a gradient for the specular so generally a non-metallic material will have a black and white specular but here with a color specular we can mimic metallic uh, stuff the specular workflow is a bit harder than the metallic roughness workflow but it allows you more liberty and more customization of the shader i have a dark iron shader here and i've just painted the mask so it's not even uh, painted super correctly but it does the job and finally i have an old wood so the old out sorry is a material i have created using a fill layer with a pure black diffuse pure black specular no glossiness and a standard eight and a cancelled emissive so it's currently pure black and i generally use it to paint between different materials to mark creases so that from afar it looks more contrasted sharper if you prefer so you can see here on the chest it make it more readable whenever i will unzoom and that's it so that's my uh, workflow to create those assets i hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and like this video if you want to support me new course available on my gumrod page <laughs>